This video is for, for complete beginners that try to look at Facebook ads and are just like, what? I skip a huge learning curve by staying till the end and watching this full training because it's going to make a lot more sense to you and you know, just kudos to you for clicking on this video and actually having someone teach you the Facebook ads manager instead of just trying to figure it out yourself because honestly that's what I did. I was like trying to teach myself Z when I didn't even understand A, B, and C yet. So kudos to you for clicking on this video and actually looking for some real training and insight on how the whole Facebook monster works. And you're going to want to stay to the end because by the end of this video, hopefully you should be able to have a better understanding of the ad manager and some of its you know, assets and features that it does of how it will help you and grow your business. Disclaimer, this video is not strategy of how to actually run Facebook ads, right? So there's, there is learning the platform and understanding the Facebook ads manager and then there's actually strategy that goes behind running Facebook ad campaigns for your specific niche. And that varies based off of which niche you're in and what you're actually running ads for. With that being said, let's hop into it. By the way, I'm Hannah Gardner and I talk a lot about e-commerce. I'm actually documenting my e-commerce journey on my YouTube channel. Also a lot of other good digital marketing things with social media, Shopify, just great stuff. So I just subscribe. And honestly, you're probably gonna need to watch this video a few times just to you know, when you're learning something, there's a learning curve. So honestly, just subscribe to the channel and yes, watch this video as many times as you want. You don't even have to watch it. Just let it run on your computer because that just helps my YouTube channel. So. All right, guys, welcome back. So remember, I am going to be giving you a full tutorial on how to use and how to run Facebook ads on the new version of Ads Manager. So if you are new to Facebook ads, this is currently what you're looking at is the current version of the Facebook ads manager. And I'm going to be showing all this to you guys in like a dead account. Like this account isn't used anymore. Um, it used to be used for my mom's salon. Now she has a different account, but just bear with me guys, because this video is literally going to cover every single detail of Facebook ads from start to finish. Um, and you're going to know how to run Facebook ads after this video. Um, and like I said in the intro, like there's a learning curve with whatever you learn and Facebook ads is a complex, um, you know, platform and it's, it, you might have to watch this video a few times, but that's totally fine. So this is currently what we're looking at is the new version of the Facebook ads manager. When you click this button, it says, try the new version. You might as well go ahead and learn this new version because, you know, obviously, you know, this is what it's going to look like here, even though it's like, I feel like this is harder to read than the other version, but whatever. So the first thing that I want to talk about, or first thing that I want to show you before we even hop into this is showing you basically an outline of what Facebook ads look like and what a campaign looks like from like a bird's eye view. So if you're like me, I like never or maybe hopefully you're not like me because you're watching this video and you're actually going and getting a tutorial instead of trying to figure it out yourself so with me kudos to you for actually going and getting a tutorial um i would go in and start trying to teach myself and then i would be like learning step you know q when i don't even understand steps a b and c and so like i said congrats to you for actually trying to have a tutorial and learn this correctly. So I found this diagram on the internet and this is kind of giving you a bird's eye view of the makeup or the brain or the tree map of what a Facebook campaign looks like. Um, and when you have this bird's eye view of like what you're actually building, it's going to make a lot more sense for you when we hop in and actually build out our campaign together. So Facebook ads are comprised of three levels. There's a campaign level, there's an ad set level, and then there's an ads level. Um, the campaign level controls things from, you know, the, the bigger view the, at the ad set level. You can then manipulate specific things and test different things. And then when you get to the ad level, it's predominantly the most specific thing about your ad itself or your campaign, which is 
tends to be the creative. So let's just go through this real quick and read what these things said. So at the campaign level, it says each campaign corresponds to a single advertisement objective that like driving website traffic. This is going to make more sense when we go through this. So the campaign level is where you're deciding why does this campaign even exist in the first place? What is the objective for this campaign? Are you running this campaign? And again, this is going to be different for whatever niche that you are specifically running Facebook ads to. So your objective, if you are running a campaign as a real estate agent trying to get real estate leads, is going to be a completely different objective if you're looking to generate sales for your e-commerce store. So it's two different objectives. All right. So at a campaign level, you could be optimizing your campaign for website traffic just to get traffic to your website. You could be optimizing your campaign for video views. So you just want to build up social proof or you want to get a bunch of views to a specific video. You can optimize a campaign for lead generation for, you know, if you're a mortgage broker and you want to get leads for your your mortgage, your mortgage broker office. Um, and you want people to fill out a form, you can make it a campaign objective for those things. And what that tells Facebook is that, hey, I want you to target people that are most likely going to do the thing that my campaign it has set for its objective. So that is a campaign level. And then when you, from there, you start building the limbs of your tree off the campaign level, and you start building out things that are called ad sets. And so at the ad set level, you are then deciding some more specific things that you're going to do within your campaign. So let's read what it says. It says, set a budget and a schedule for each of your ad sets. You will also define your targeting placement and bid settings at the ad set level. So now we're determining if few more things about our ad on a more specific basis at this level. So we are going to set our budget. We're going to set our schedule for the whole for the, the campaign. And remember, at the ad set level, you can make the budget on this ad set different from this budget on this ad set because you're this is where you would start doing a lot of your testing or split testing is what they call it here in Facebook. Um, so if you want to test your audience, so if on this ad set, maybe you want to only show to you know, your ad to, um, you know, newly engaged people, right? So on this ad set, you would be targeting newly engaged people. And then on this ad set, maybe you're targeting um, single people. I don't know, whatever it is. So now your ad sets are working against each other to test to see which one is going to, you know, get the most um, you know, wins for your objective. So for whatever it is, and now you're split testing these two different audiences to see which one wins. Um, you don't just have to test audiences at this ad set level. You can also test placement. So this one could be placed on Instagram. This one could be placed on Facebook. And you're, so you're testing your variables to see which one is going to win um, for your campaign. And then obviously, once you figure out what the, everyone's always looking for their winning ad set, right? Once you find that winning ad set, that's one that you usually scale and put more, more, more money towards. Um, and then we even get even more detail or oriented to the ad level. So your ad level is things like it says, your text, your call to action, um, your links, your video. So it's the actual ad itself. So what your ad looks like, what does it say, what copy, what text is above it. Um, and you can then, you know, further split test to see which creative um, and which ad is going to win for this particular ad set. So it's basically just you're, you're getting more and more variables as you go down this ladder um, and you're, you're testing all these different things to see which one wins. So just from a bird's eye view, I hope this gives you a better understanding as we move into the actual ads manager and we build out a campaign together and we start learning all these different things. Um, but this little piece of information alone, I wish someone gave me this visual when I was trying to learn this because I was like, learning this before I even understand, well, what is even an objective? What does that even mean? So it's going to make more sense as we hop into the ads, man the ads manager and um, we go from there. So let's hop over there. The newest version of the Facebook ads manager. This is what it looks like right now. So the first thing that you're going to want to do to build a Facebook campaign is come over to this corner and press create here. 
And as we talked about previously, the first thing that it's going to ask you to do is define your objective. Now, Facebook is constantly having updates and then there's always going to be like these little, you know, things up here, like asking you, you know, whatever it is. In this case, it's saying I'm creating a campaign for a, in a special category. So it's talking about ads related to credit, employment or housing. My ads not having anything to do with this. So we kind of don't let these things like freak you out. Just ignore them if they have nothing to do with you. So as we talked about, as I said before, we can choose our objectives. So these are all the objectives that Facebook allows you to optimize your campaign for. And remember, as I said, you want to pick the campaign, you want to pick the objective that is the most correlated to what you are trying to achieve because Facebook knows everything about everybody on Facebook. And so based off of what you choose, it's going to show your ads for that specific objective to a specific demographic of people that seem to match these types of objectives. So let's just go through them for a second. All right. So store traffic, um, catalog sales. So this is more for e-commerce or if you're selling products, a conversion. Um, I was really confused in the beginning. What is a conversion? Like, what does that even mean? A conversion. Well, let's read it a drive valuable actions on your website app or in messenger so a conversion that didn't really explain it but a conversion is a specific event or action that you want to take that you want somebody to take on your website so a conversion ooh, my phone's ringing ah. Sorry. Okay. So a conversion is like I said, it's any like event that you want someone to take on your, on your website. So it doesn't just mean that it's a, a your an event like purchase. It could be a view content. It could be an add to cart. It could be initiate checkout. There's a bunch of different events that go on on an e-commerce website. Um, but for the most part, if you have an e-commerce store and you're trying to drive traffic for, um, you know, for physical products or digital products, basically where someone buys something right then and there, um, you want to optimize for conversion and purchase because you're ultimately trying to get purchases. Um, catalog sales, that is if you set up a catalog. So if you have your product synced to Facebook, um, I'm just now starting to test this out. Um, I'm sure um, it probably works really well. If you're running, you know, dynamic catalog ads, you probably don't understand what that means, but we'll get into it later. Um, other things like you can optimize for video views. So if you're trying to collect a lot of data, maybe, and you have like a really good video piece of content and you want to, um, you know, build up a bunch of social proof on one video, you know, or, you know, get a viral video per se, you would want to optimize for video views. Um, it's not going to give you a bunch of clicks to your website. It's not going to give you sales per se. It could, but the goal is to get, your video in front of people that spend a lot of time watching video views. And video views tend to be one of the cheapest ad objectives out there. They, you know, if that's what you're trying to do, then the the view, the video through play is what you would optimize for. And, you know, it's like getting someone to watch 15 seconds of your video. Um, it, it tends to be like very, very cheap. You can optimize for app installs, lead generation. Lead generation is when you actually fill out a form. So you would click the ad and then a form pops up within Facebook. Um, and then, you know, it's a lead, right? So if you're a mortgage broker and you're running lead generation ads where someone puts in their contact information inside Facebook, that's what you would use. Um, and it can optimize for that because Facebook knows the types of people that, you know, are more likely to fill out a form on Facebook. A traffic campaign is just driving traffic to whatever, you know, your landing page, your blog, whatever it is. Brand awareness or reach. Um, reach just means that it's going to show it to a bunch of people. It's probably not going to be in the demographic that you want, but it's going to be in front of a lot of people. So if that's what you're trying to do, then you can optimize reach. So these are like the main ones. Um, messages. If you're going to, if you're trying to get people to subscribe to a chat bot, um, that might be a little bit advanced, but for the most part, conversions is one of the main ones. Video views, um, engagement is also another one. If you're trying to build up a lot of social proof on a campaign. Um, but most of us are really trying to sell something. So <laughs> conversions is probably going to be the best one for you and then optimizing for purchase. So, and we're going to scroll down here. We can name our campaign. We're going to just put test example. 
Um, and then you have these two options down here. So it says create a split test. In A, B, test your creative placement audience um, and add deliberate optimization strategy. So what this is going to do, um, it says test ad sets against each other to understand which strategies you've given the best result. Your potential reach will be divided among your ad sets for accurate split test results. So if you want to create a split test, um, it is going to send the most traffic per se to the winning ad set. Um, so you can do that if you're trying to, you know, split test audiences, split test um, placement, whatever it is. Um, now you also have the option to do a CBO campaign, a campaign budget optimization, where, you know, you could put $50 on your campaign level and Facebook. And then, you know, you could have one, obviously one campaign with like 10 different ad sets. So think of your tree, you have one campaign, you have 10 ad sets. When you run a campaign budget optimization ad, what it does, it says, hey, Facebook, here's $50. I want you to put the most money on which you think the ad sets winning. So you're giving your money to Facebook and they're deciding where they're gonna spend it on the ad set. Where when you're split testing, um, you are, let's see if you can actually choose both of these. Nope, you can only do one. Um, you're, where you're, when you're split testing, you're actually testing a specific um, variable that is, you know, that you want to change. So those are options that you can use. It really depends on what you're using this, what you're using Facebook ads for in the beginning, but just know what that means. Um, and you may have to watch this, like I said before, you may have to watch this video a few times because it is like learning a new language to really understand all these like new marketing terms and you know this new jargon. So we're gonna just keep going forward because we're just building a standard campaign. So now we're on our first ad set level. Okay, so we have our we have the base, we have the tree, and now we're starting to build a branch. And we're only gonna build one branch in the beginning. Um, and I'm going to show you how you can duplicate these branches so you can make more faster so you don't have to keep going and making them all from scratch again. So we're optimiz optimizing for conversions. So what you're going to want to do is choose your um, conversion event. So in order to choose a conversion event here, this is this this conversion event is only showing up on this campaign because we're optimizing for conversions. If I was running an ad for a different objective, say if the objective is traffic and I go to continue, um, it's a, it's different, right? It's not asking for, it's not asking for a pixel, which I'm going to explain what a pixel is in a second. But some of these things about at the ad set level are going, the questions it's going to ask you are going to be different from you know, each objective that you are optimizing for. So if we go back to objective, we click on conversions. We're going to continue. Um, it's saying, please select a conversion again, a event. So remember how I said that a conversion is not just a purchase, right? If I click on this, a conversion can be a view content. So someone going to my website and actually viewing my content. It could be an add to cart, an initiate checkout, a purchase, an ad payment info. It could be a lead. So there's all these different things that I can optimize for. But before you can even get to this point, when you're running a conversion campaign, you have to install something called a Facebook pixel. So with that being said, you would actually have to go to um, let me just show you right here. You're going to want to go back to your ads manager and set up something called a pixel. Um, so to get to this, you would come here, you would go to events manager. And if you have a new ads account, there should be a button somewhere that says set up pixel. Um, and basically this will walk you through the steps and what a pixel is. It is a piece of code that you install into your website. If you have a Shopify, Shopify is the easiest website to set up a Facebook pixel. It's like, you'll see it integrates like really easy. If I click set up pixel, connect to our partner platform, and then Shopify is going to be right here. And then there's literally a space inside Shopify um, that you just put in the the Facebook pixel code. But anyway, 
back to this, but again, what that does is when you install that piece of code from Facebook into your website, might not be Shopify, might be, you know, WooCommerce or whatever you use. Um, so it might look a little bit different based off of what website you're using. When you do that though, it's like putting a mini brain um, inside your website that is in direct communication with Facebook. So what happens is, is Facebook now begins to start um, collecting all the data of the people that it's sending to your website. So every single time Facebook sends traffic to your website, it is your website, which mine is Shopify. Shopify is then sharing that information back with Facebook and saying, hey, yes, this, this dude just went to my website. And now Facebook is tracking that person um, and starting to place them in like little files. Like they looked at this product and they have this demographic and blah, 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 blah. And so now Facebook is starting to, you're starting to train this pixel or this brain that I like to call it and informing it of the types of demographics of the people that are going to your website. And so over time, as this pixel gets seasoned or as more people go to your website from Facebook, Facebook is now, this brain is starting to get really, really smart on knowing who to show your ad to. So over time, um, this is like a really old account. Um, it can see seven is seven events have been received. So that means that because of this pixels installed, it knows that seven people added to cart um, from directly from Facebook. And so, you know, if I want to optimize for add to carts or I want to optimize for purchase, Facebook is now able to show my Facebook ad to people that are most similar to these people that have already spent money with me. And the people that are your warmest traffic are people that have already been to your website or already, you know, gave you their name, their phone number, their email, or they actually bought something from you. You know, those people are your warmest traffic. And so now when you share that information back with Facebook, they're like, it makes your, your ads optimize a lot better because it knows that, you know, it's not just cold, cold traffic. They're at least like lukewarm traffic and <laughs> people that kind of match the demographics of people that have already spent money with you or have done actions on your website. So for conversion campaign, we want to optimize for purchase. Now, whew, let's move down. The next thing that we are going to do is set up our audience. So in this section, um, as you can see here, we're right here. Um, we are going to tell Facebook who we want to show our ad to. And there's a few different options here. So just, just bear with me. I know you're learning a lot of new words. That's why you're going to probably have to watch this video a few times, which is totally fine. Make sure you subscribe while you're doing that because you know, then you can watch this video whenever you want. So we're at the audience level and at the audience level, like I said, we're telling Facebook who we want to show this Facebook ad to. So you have this, this option of something called custom audiences. Now, if this is a new Facebook ads account, you don't have any custom audiences. A custom audience is something that your Facebook pixel has cultivated. So if you wanted to show your, um, so, so if you wanted to show your Facebook ad to, um, so let's just back up your custom audience can look like a few different things. A custom audience can be, you know, just showing to people who follow you on Instagram. A custom audience could be showing it to people that have clicked on your website. A custom audience could be people that have purchased from you. A custom audience is people that you know, have already interacted with you before. So it's not cold traffic. It's people that already follow you. Maybe it's an email list. Maybe it's um, people that have been to your website. Um, and it's just showing to those people. Um, in the beginning, you're not going to have a custom audience. And to make a custom audience, you have to have that pixel installed and you also have to set it up, which I will show you how to set up custom audiences after this. Um, and lookalike audiences, we'll get into that in a little bit. But if you're just starting out, you probably don't have um, much of a custom audience, but you do want to get that pixel in so you can start at least tracking those events. So we're going to just move down to the location. All right. Obviously you want to show the ad to the location that you're in or wherever you're selling to. If you're selling outside the United States, make sure you add the countries where you can sell to um, your age. 
when you're first starting out, you don't really want to assume, like unless you have a very niche product or you have a niche thing that you're you're looking for. Like if you're looking to sell, you know, real estate, obviously you don't want to show your ads to an 18 year old girl <laughs> or an 18 year old boy. Or, you know, if you're, you know, selling, you know, life insurance, yeah, you don't want like an 18 year old person to see it. So, I mean, if you're you if you have something specific where you know the demographic you know the age demographic put in the age that you think if you don't really know like you're just really assuming whatever the age is then i would just leave it pretty broad in the beginning because you'll be able to go back into your analytics and see what types of ages of people are interacting with your ads the most and then you can optimize from there gender again same thing if you don't if it's like kind of something generic where you don't really know if it's more boys or more girls just leave it open because through testing your ads you'll be able to discover that detailed targeting so this is where you would actually put in the detailed targeting of okay what type of people do i want to show this ads and facebook Again, they know everything about everything. Like you can come into this browse section and look at some of this stuff. You can target people based off their education level, the field of study, the school, you know, the life events, the parent, their relationship, the interests, um, behaviors, like really just go through these things and just, you know, based off of what you think is, you know, what their interests are, add some of these in here. And a lot of these are going to get discovered through testing. You're not really going to know, you know, what is the perfect, you know, detailed targeting until you just test these things. And strategy for Facebook ads is not what I'm teaching in this video. I'm just showing you how to use Facebook ads. The, the targeting and setting and the actual strategy that you're going to use for whatever you're running Facebook ads for is completely dependent on your niche and it's different for everybody. So that would be something to look into after this video, but do not stress yourself out on Facebook ad strategy until you just understand the platform because just learning the platform is a learning curve within itself. Don't get analysis paralysis. Don't try to move ahead on ad strategy and all this stuff until you just understand how to build a Facebook ad in the beginning. So. This is where you would pick your audience. Um, expand detailed targeting criteria. Um, it may increase conversions at a lower cost per conversion. I don't usually keep this checked because, you know, for e-commerce, this is basically saying, hey, Facebook, you know, show my ad to whoever you want to based off of what you want, based on whoever you want. Um, so I don't want that. Um, let's just see what else is down here. Languages. I put English. If you're showing the ad to people that speak English, you know, there is a large percentage of people in the United States that can't speak English. So you don't want your ad to be showing to people that can't speak English because then it would just be a waste of an impression. So you don't want to do that. So now we're at placements. Um, you can do automatic placements. A placement is where your ad is actually being shown. So when you come to edit place it, placements, you can see all the places that Facebook shows your ads. So it's not just Facebook. Facebook owns Instagram. So, you know, do you want your Facebook, your ad to be seen on Instagram stories, messenger stories, in stream videos, in messengers, in article? Um, so, you know, apps and sites. So all of Facebook partners, do you want it to be shown on all these things? I usually don't. I usually just want it to be shown on Facebook feed, Instagram feed, and in, in stream videos. So that's where I show my ads. Again, for your strategy and your niche, it could be completely different. But there is all these different places to show your ad. So look through them, you know, see what tickles your fancy. <laughs> and I just said tickle your fancy, so that's good. <laughs> um, now we get even more into details. Only when, do you wanna show your ad only when it's connected, when the person is connected to Wi-Fi, and do you want it on all devices? You can come in here and narrow it down to mobile devices, Android, iOS, um, and you can check if you want it to only when connected to Wi-Fi. I've seen mixed things about only when connected to Wi-Fi because when people are connected to Wi-Fi, they're more prone to like not losing connection mid purchase or mid whatever they're doing. Um, but then I know some people that don't click that. So I don't really know. It's just something that you would have to test. 
Um, budget and schedule. Um, you can come in here and do cost control if you want. I usually just leave this blank. Um, and then you pick your daily budget. So how much money do you want to spend on this ad set? And remember, this is just a generic ad set. So you can spend $20 on one ad set. And, you know, if you're running five different ads, spending $20 a day, then, you know, that's $100 a day. So just think and account for that, for how much money you actually want to be spending per day. So if your budget is $20 for the whole day, then maybe you only want to have four ad sets with $5 on every ad set. So that is the ad set level. We can even come down here. Oh, here we go. Conversion window. Um, the conversion window is, um, so if they click on the ad today, and say they purchased, they clicked on the ad, they went to your website, and they didn't purchase until you know two weeks later, Facebook is not going to track that. So it's the conversion window is seven days after clicking or one day after viewing. So um, it's, it's not going to track the conversion in your analytics. So you won't know where the purchase came from if they purchased two weeks later. It's only going to track it for seven days. Um, and you can also charge when you get an impression. I can't change this. Sometimes like on video views, you can change this and you, you would want to get charged when it's a through play or something like that. Um, your scheduling just run all time delivery type standard. So that is the ad set level. If I'm losing you guys at any point, make sure you're putting your comments in the comment section because we're now we're going to go into the ad level now we have created the campaign so we have the trunk of the tree we have one branch and now we're about to make an ad um, which is like another like mini branch right so the first thing that it's asking for is identity so you want to say um, where like who's showing this ad right so this says salon identity this is the Facebook page if you're running Facebook ads from an in if you want to run Facebook ads on Instagram you have to choose an Instagram page which there's no Instagram page for this ad set, but choose your Instagram page. It needs to be connected. Um, and then you now can choose what do you actually want the creative to look like in this campaign, in this ad, right? Do you want it to be a carousel ad where you have pictures that scroll um, from side to side to side like this? Do you want it to just be a single video? Do you want it to be a collection? Um, we're going to choose just the most simplest one is a carousel ad, right? Um, they all convert. It just depends. Like, like I said, what are you trying to do? What, is, what are you trying to achieve? So a carousel ad is what we're choosing. Um, and as you can see, all these are the different placements, um, which we need to fix this because, and again, if we need to go back and fix the campaign, like if you change your mind on anything, you can come back here. It's not going to get lost. You come to placements. And we are going to edit. We only want it to show up on Facebook, Instagram feed, not on stories, in stream, and not this stuff. Cool. Budget and scheduling. We're going to go back to identity. Okay. So now we can see that we only are showing it on Facebook, mobile newsfeed, desktop newsfeed, Facebook, in stream, mobile, desktop, and on Instagram feed. So up here is where we can add the text for what we where what we actually want to say inside of our ad. Um, and then it asks us a few questions. Automatically show the best performing cards first. Add a card at the end with your page profile picture. So what this is going to do, what this is saying is that it's going to show this this in the, the order that it's getting the best reaction. So whatever picture gets like the most clicks or the most engagement, it's going to show the winning pictures first, which is awesome because Facebook does that for you. It says add a card at the end with your page or profile picture. Um, you can do that um, by, I guess it would just be the last picture um, in the video slide or whatever. So if you want that, I don't really want that. I like that would be like a picture of your logo or something. If you want it to be like that last card, I don't really care for that because like you can see my logo right here. So I just want it to be all my products and what I'm trying to sell. Um, so you would come over here and select your images for what you want to show. And again, you have to come and edit them one by one here. 
So we can come here, let's just select a picture of a puppy. Um, and then I would have to come here and select another image. This ad is, don't ever make an ad like this. <laughs> so we have our three pictures. Um, and now we have our headline. Um, and then we also have <clears throat> some more text that we can add down here. Um, I really like using like emojis in my ads and stuff like that because it just, you know, they stand out when you use emojis. People like tend to see them more. Um, the headline as well. Um, I usually put in whatever the offer is I put up here um, again. And then I, you know, put some more like clickbaity, not clickbaity. Well, yeah, it's clickbaity, but like some other headlines right here with a little description here. And what I usually do here is just put like the arrow emojis to this button here, which is obviously the call to action, which is the, you know, the CTA, the call to action. Um, and that's what they're actually clicking on. So you need to put in a URL here. Where are you actually driving this traffic to? So your website, your landing page, whatever it is. Um, and then you decide what you want the button to say. You can say, learn more, see now, shop now. You probably shop now since I'm trying to sell something. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to pull a URL. Let's just use this URL, which makes no sense. But we're going to just put a URL here. Cool. So this is where we want to drive our traffic to. I don't think it's going to let me do that. So let's try this. Uh, it's my Etsy store. Cool. So we're driving traffic to my Etsy store. Um, we want to put it in our headline, your description. Cool. And then we can see what it's going to look like on Instagram. This is what it's going to look like on Instagram. On Instagram, the headline and this text kind of conflict with each other. So I try to write some like headline and, um, and text that kind of makes sense right here because on Facebook they're separated by the picture, but on Instagram they're not. So you just want to look through these to make sure that it's displaying like so it makes sense. Um, so yeah, that's basically how you set up a whole campaign. Um, but now what we're going to want to do is we are going to want to publish camp this campaign, which I would never publish a campaign like this because this doesn't even make sense. But um, what we would want to do is now if we're running split tests, so if we're testing audiences, two audiences against each other, we would come back here to this ad set level. As you can see, there's different little boxes here. Um, and we can duplicate our ad sets and then tweak e every ad set so that it's testing a variable. So if the variable is an audience, maybe the variable is the placement, maybe the variable is the age, whatever we're testing um, to figure out who best um, is fit for this ad, is we're gonna figure that out in the ad set level. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to publish this ad and then we're going to go and we're going to duplicate, you know, four or five ad sets and change the variable um, to see which one is going to win. Because usually the first ad that you put out is not going to be the winner. You have to test. Um, sometimes you have to test a lot, but that's just the, the name of the game. So we are going to publish this and I'm going to show you how um, we can duplicate an ad set and then you know test it test the variable all right guys so we're back at the ad manager level right and so now everything has changed on this new platform because all of your your campaign level your ad set level and your ad is here on this um, left hand side so um it's a little bit different than what it was when i click on these there's some weird things happening. It's a little bit more confusing, I feel like. Um, so what we're looking to do now is we're looking to duplicate our ad sets because we are going to change one variable at the ad set level to see um, which one which one wins. So we're going to go back to our ad sets. This is a different ad account, by the way. So um, when I click on one of these, it's pulling it here. So you can see I have one selected. When I select two, two selected. So um, I have one selected. We're going to click here to go to the ad set level. And what you can do here, you can highlight this and you can press duplicate. 
Now, when you duplicate the ad, you have the option of duplicating it in the original campaign. So we want this ad set to stay in the original tree trunk, the original campaign, right? So we want to duplicate it in this. Um, you can you also have the option to create a new campaign and duplicate the ad set in a new tree trunk, but we don't want to do that or um, in an existing one or a new one, but we just want to duplicate this um, ad set in the original campaign because we want the objective and everything else to be the same. So we're going to duplicate it here. And now you can see that the title is a copy of this one. You can read, you want to title these. Um, you know, a lot of people have different ways of titling their ad sets, their campaigns and stuff like that. Um, usually you would just put US 18 and then you would put in the audience. So people that like butterflies. So if I made the audience for this one for horses and maybe I'm testing now for this new ad set that are people that like butterflies. So I'm putting that variable in the title. So I'm going through my data. I can see, um, you know, what the difference between the ad sets are. So um, now we duplicated it. Everything is still the same. The, 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 Right now, the audience is the same, the budget's the same, the, the ad itself is the same, but we wanna change something about it because we want a variable. And so this is a different ad from what we just looked at because I'm pulling this from like old, old ad accounts. So if I wanted to come in here and change um, the audience, this is using a saved audience. We would come in here and I would, you know, put a different audience in here and then run the the whole campaign testing people like that like butterflies because I'm pretty sure butterflies is probably butterfly lovers is a, is an interest so if I'm testing butterfly lovers versus horse lovers um, that's how I would change that variable in here again we want to keep the expand targeting um, unchecked and it duplicated it exactly as the first campaign as before. So that is how you set up a generic Facebook ad. And now the next thing that we're gonna go into is understanding your Facebook ad data. So as this starts running, and as your ad gets clicks, it gets impressions, all these different words that you probably don't understand right now that we're gonna cover um, in this next piece, um, this is going to help you understand what your ad is actually doing. And based off the data, you can then optimize your ad or change your ad. You can shut your ad off um, based off what the data is telling you. So pretend I published this and now we have two ads running. We're going to go back to the account overview. And I'm going to look at, we're going to go to the campaigns. We're gonna look at um, this first one right here. We're gonna go to AdSense. Um, as you can see, it's in draft because I didn't publish that. We're gonna look at these things right here. Now, again, I'm gonna reiterate that this is like learning a new language. Do not beat yourself up if you don't know all the definitions of these words off the bat because it's a lot of shit to learn. It's a lot. There's a lot of things, a lot of different words that you've probably never heard before um, when you know, you're know you just having a learning curve. So what we want to look at um, is this column right here because we can look, we are going to set up this bar right here for things that matter the most to us. And again, depending on which niche you're in, it's gonna look different for everybody. So, um, you know, it's really just learning the language is what's winning for you right now, is just understanding this brain of ads manager and all the different things that you can do with it. So, you can set up, this column right here sets up this bar differently. So, if you wanna look at engagement metrics, this shows you engagement metrics. If you click delivery metrics, um, it shows you delivery metrics, video engagement, it shows you metrics, three second views, cost per three second view, it shows you a bunch of different metrics here. You can then also customize columns and then you can say, you can actually make your own, um, your own whole row of things that you just wanna see specifically. So things that I like to see specifically um, when I'm running ads for e-commerce are things like 
frequency, um, reach, delivery, amount spent. I want to know how much money I'm spending. Um, let's see. I want to see. We can get rid of video views because that has its own column. Right now, I'm just making my own um, my own personalized column. Um, so I want to see um, frequency, amount spent, cost per click for every click, um, click through rate all. I want to see um, cost per result. I want to see things like my link clicks, my unique link clicks. So if someone clicked the link twice, I don't want it. I, I'll see the unique link clicks for how many people actually click versus how many clicks I got in total. Um, cost per link click. Um, I like to look at you um, unique add to carts. Um, so you can really just come in here and just mess with whatever you're trying to, whatever, whatever you want to see really. And there's no rhyme or like, there's no right or wrong way to set up your header bar. It's just depending on what you need to see for your, what makes sense for your business. Um, so when I click apply here and it still says custom, I can save this and make this a preset for my um, ads so for my ads. So if I want to, you know, you still have all these options to see video engagement and all this stuff. But if I want to see my custom one that, you know, this is what Hannah needs to see in her header bar. So it's organized. That's how you would set that up right there. Um, so basically for me in e-commerce, what is important is my unique link clicks and your, my CPC, my cost per link click right? So I want to know what it's going to cost me to get people to my website. So 31 cents in this ad, I don't even know what this ad is running for, 31 cents to get a unique link click to the website. So 31 cents is really good. And all these numbers and all these metrics are relative to what you're actually selling. How much is this lead or this sale actually making you? So people are like, what's a good click through rate? What's a good cost per click well you know it depends on every single niche if the product you're selling is a dollar and it costs you 31 cents to acquire that customer maybe that's not winning for you because you know your cost and all your other costs and expenses that's that's losing for you but maybe if you know you're selling a house and you're trying to get leads for real estate and you got a 31 cent click that's really cheap if that sale of that house is going to make, you know, you a grand or something like that. So it's all just relative to your business. Um, I know in e-commerce having a click through rate, um, a link click through rate to your website over 1.5%. That is, uh, technically considered pretty good. Um, you know, if it's 1.3%, as long as the clicks are cheap for what you're selling, then it's winning. So, um, that's what all these things are. So, um, let's just go over some metrics just to, um, talk about, you know, what some of these things actually mean or what some of the most important metrics mean for you. So frequency is the amount of time people have seen your ad. So this is 1.04 times. Um, so if it gets to like 2.0 frequency, that means that the ad is showed twice to every single person um, that it made an impression on. If it's, um, you know, five, then that means it's shown five times. So frequency is important um, because, you know, you kind of want to know if your frequency is getting like really high to like 20 or 30 and you're not, you know, getting a bunch of clicks or anything, maybe that means that you need to cut that ad um, but if the frequency is really high and as the frequency goes up, like you keep showing the ad to the same people um, and you're the, you know, you're getting a lot of sales from it or you're getting more leads from it because the frequency is so high, maybe that's a good thing for you. So it really, that's just something that I like to see how the frequency affects um, my sales, whether showing to the same people is good or bad. Um, cost per result. The cost per result is for whatever you're optimizing for. So this ad is the objective for this ad is per post engagement. If the objective is for a purchase, 
or I mean, if um, whatever you're optimizing for, if it's for purchase, if it's for um, through plays, like video through plays, that is what a result means. So it's different for everything that you're you're optimizing for. So you want to know what it's costing you for a purchase. So like I said, yeah, if the click was 31 cents, but it took you six dollars to get a purchase and the product's only worth four dollars, then your cost per result is not technically winning because you're not even breaking even. So cost per results good. Your budget is your budget. Um, quality ranking. So Facebook gives you a relevancy score um, from one to 10, which they rank your ads. It's kind of like hit or miss whether what Facebook, like their relevancy score, they call it. Um, what it actually means, this quality ranking, ad relevance, diagnosis. Yeah, so it's just like they're gonna give you a score after like a thousand impressions. Facebook's gonna grade you on your ad, whether it's good or not. Um, sometimes the higher the relevancy score, if it's closer to 10, then that means that your ad's great. But sometimes I've had ads where the relevancy score is like 10, but I'm still not getting sales. So it's not like the biggest metric ever, but obviously if your relevancy score is like a two or three, like it might just be a bad ad and you might need to redo your copy or your creative. Um, impression, an impression means how many times the ad was on somebody's screen. So it's not that they clicked or you know they engaged with the ad, it's just how many times it was in front of somebody. So. Um, an impression, so 6,229, that means that this ad was in front of 6,229 people. Um, and out of those 6,229 people, there was 52 clicks. Um, uh, and then this is also the cost per 1,000 impressions. So how, what it's actually costing you to get it shown per 1,000 people. Um, your link click through rate. So like I said, with the e-commerce, like 1.5% with e-commerce is technically good, but it's also again, relative to, you know, if you're selling something that's super, super niche, but you know, it's a really, really expensive, you know, $5,000 table or something like, you know, maybe 0.5 click through rate is good because the return is so high, you know, it's all relative. So um, click through rate all that is 3.29%. That's for every click. So that's not just for the link click. That could be a, a like click. It could be, you know, a click um, to see more on, you know, your Instagram ad, like to see more text. Like it's just all the clicks. Um, your website purchases and your video views. Let's see what other words are in here that we should know. Add to carts. Um, engagement. So you can see things like post reactions, post comments, post saves, post shares, links, clips, page likes, bunch of different metrics, CPC, cost per link click, um, performance. I'm trying to think of any other words. We have more ringing CPM, cost per 1,000 impressions, CTR, cost per link click, CTR. Yeah, okay, so I really just like looking at the click through rate, like the percentage. Um, I like seeing how much a click costs me. Um, I like looking at the relevancy score and the frequency. Those are like really the, the biggest things that I like to, to really analyze. Um, so yeah, and usually for the most part, when it comes to the ad of why it's winning or not winning like the main reasons why your ad would not work or why it would work is because of who you're targeting the message that you're conveying and the creative so it's really like those three big things of like trying to me like get all these things like like to equalize basically where it's like the right audience with the right message with the right creative and it's just kind of like testing all these little things to balance it for the most part you know things like placement like where the ads are actually showing like instagram and facebook you know um things like even your budget you know well is my raising my budget actually going to you know change whatever um you know those things are important and but they're not the biggest variables that are going to make or break your campaign it's really just your audience your copy and your creative that are really really essential to have seen success with your facebook ads so that is some metrics that are really important to know 
Um, again, it's different for every niche. So just knowing it and being in here and knowing like what buttons to press and, you know, understanding that brand of Facebook is really what's winning for you right now since you're a complete beginner. So now we are going to go into audiences, what we talked about earlier, custom audiences and lookalike audiences. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that um, right now. So we're going to hop over into that section to get to audiences. You're going to want to click up here and you're going to want to click audiences. So remember, in order to create an audience, you have to have your pixel installed. So remember what I showed you before to actually install your pixel, you have to go to events manager and sync it to you know your funnel page or whatever it is. And it's essential to creating your custom audiences. You have the option to come here and create an audience um, without pixel data too, so you can use um, like a file, so you can upload an email list, you can do um, a custom audience from videos, from your Instagram followers, from events, from your Facebook page likes. Um, but for specific events, you have to have your pixel installed in order to collect that data. Um, so for e-commerce, the strongest pixel data you have is a, either a customer file of people that have purchased from you or a you know, it tracking from your website traffic, which obviously that pixel has to be installed. Um, so what, how to create a, you want to make custom, first of all, you want to make custom audiences for everything because custom audiences are your hottest traffic that you have available. And if you're a new business, you don't have any traffic yet. That's fine, but you still want to set these up beforehand so it starts collecting and seasoning the audience. So even though you might not use them in, be in the beginning, you still want to have them set up because eventually you're going to use that data um, in your Facebook campaigns down the line. So if we want to go to website traffic here, I click website traffic. Um, and it says the eco board in pixel. So this was like some company, um, that I used to work with before. Um, and so there's a pixel installed in their website. Um, and so I can come up here and optimize for all these different events. And remember, these are called conversion events, right? So a conversion, this took me the longest time, like to understand, I could I just didn't get it for some reason. A conversion is um, just any action that someone's taking that you would want someone to take. So a page view, a view content, an add to cart, an add shipping details. Like this has just gotten so advanced since I've even started this. Um, and um, yeah, you can come up here and mess with that if you want. Include people who have met any all. Um, Okay, so cool. So you can make a narrow audience or a broader audience. So for any person that meets this specific requirement, or you can get it more narrow and you want them to, you want the person to um, meet all of these requirements. So if it's all website videos, include more people, all website visitors that um, added to cart only. Um, so it's any of these people. So it's website visitors or people that have added to cart or it's all people or any people, <laughs> any people that have done this or this, or if it's all people that has only that has been to the website and added to cart. So you can refine it. But I mean, we're just making broad custom audiences because you're a beginner and you're just setting this shit up. So, <laughs> so we're going to make a custom audio audience of all website visitors, AWB, for the past 180 days, I think you can get it for 180 days. So we're going to create the audience. Um, and then it's going to say, find new people similar to your existing users. Um, and this is the next step to make something what is called a look a like audience. Now, in the beginning, when you don't have any data, you're not going to have any look alike audiences because there's not going to be enough data sample to do this. But let me just explain to you what a look alike audience is. So a look alike audience is taking your custom audience. So if you've had 3000 people that have been to your website and now this custom audience, this this all website visitors um, is this number is now 3000 people. What you can do is you can come up here, you can select this 
and create a look a like audience. So what you're doing at this point is you're saying, hey, Facebook, I want to um, select my this this audience that now has 3000 people in it and I want to target 1 million people that are the top 1% that look closest to these same 3000 people that have already been to my website. Now, one thing I got confused in the beginning is like, oh, do I have to keep making audiences as time goes on? No, this is going to season itself. You just have to set it up. And then as you know, data comes through it, it just seasons itself and more data gets added. So you don't have to like update your audiences. So a lookalike audience, the strongest lookalike audience, obviously, that you're going to have is for purchases. So if you have an email list, remember, because you can make a customer audience, a, create a custom audience from customer files. So if you have a CSV file of all the people in your email list of people that have purchased from you, you can take that email list, you can upload it right here, um, use a file, a customer file. Um, you can use this one. I accept and upload a CSV file here of an email list. So if you have any email hosting platform like MailChimp, Klaviyo, you know, um, whatever, active campaign, you can upload that file here and then Facebook will like um, highlight all the emails that are correlated to with a Facebook page or a Facebook or an Instagram page and it, it can pull the data of those people um, and you know make your custom audience and then you can from that audience again you can come here and you can make a look-alike audience and target you know one million people or however a huge data sample of people that have similar demographics to people that have already spent money with you and this is really really powerful data um, this is something that you're going to work up to and you know as time goes on, you know, hopefully you collect more data like this. Um, but again, you just want to have this set up now. You're not going to be able to make the look like now, but just showing you how to do it for now for the time being. And so um, as time goes on, um, you can you'll be able to, um, you know, create as many custom audiences as you want, and then you can target them in your ads. Um, because remember when we were making the ads at the ad set level and you were putting in targeting, there's a slot there that says um, custom audiences. So you can choose to target people that have already liked your Instagram page, people that are in your email list, people that follow you on you know Instagram, whatever. So super, super powerful stuff, just something that you should have set up as a beginner regardless. Um, so you can start collecting as much data as possible. And remember to go and make set up your pixel. You come here, you go to events manager. Um, and you can add your data source here, which I don't think this account will let me do that. So yeah, that is pretty much the basics of the Facebook, the new Facebook ads manager. Um, you know, you're like, I keep iterating. Don't get hard on yourself. Don't beat yourself up because it's a big learning curve. This from when I first learned how to do this, you know, <laughs> a lot, like one year ago to today it has changed drastically. Like everything's changed and it's constantly being updated. But that is the basics of how it works. That's the brain behind it. And that's like when you can see that diagram in your head, things kind of just make more sense. As far as your strategy of, you know, your Facebook ad strategy for your niche, that is something that you need to worry about after you just understand the basics of this. Um, after you know these basics, then you can start stressing about, okay, so what Facebook ad strategy do I actually use to make money? Do I, you know, run 50 ad sets or do I optimize for what objective, whatever it is, but just learning the learn, learning the language and learning these new words is what's winning for you right now. So feel free to watch this video over and over again. Please watch this video over and over again. Um, and if you have any questions at all, please comment down your questions um, in the comment section below. And I will see you guys in the next video. And thanks for watching.